morning. You're listening to Central Wisconsin's 24-hour information station, AM 1320 WFHR. It's time now for the Morning Magazine, brought to you by Comfort Air Heating, Cooling, Plumbing. Thank you, Jerry, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's show on AM 1320 and streaming live at WFHR.com. We also welcome Tom, uh, Angie's uh, spouse. Uh, Tom, Tom Locks is here with Wisconsin Rapids Community Media, and the reason why it's time for our uh, monthly report on things happening in Wood County, and uh, normally the board chairman, Lance Plimmel, is here. But today we're gonna do what we do once a month, normally for an entire hour. We got uh, <laughs> Sheriff Thomas Riker, Captain Sean Becker. Good morning, <laughs> good morning guys. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going good. We're happy. I'm, I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting uh, used to getting up when it's still dark. Well, that's what you were saying. It's uh, you're becoming a night owl. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let me get this microphone for you. Okay, so. Uh, that's uh, it's great being here, pinch hitting for Lance. Okay, yeah, Lance is busy, I guess, with some interviews. Or he had some interviews going. He called up on, um, I think Monday, mm -hmm. uh, Monday, and asked if uh, if we could if we could come over and and, and do his time for him, and uh, we're more than happy to. Okay, uh, according to the note Pam passed along uh, to me, you wanted to talk about opioids or. Well, I I didn't. Uh, okay. That was that was just something that uh, that Lance had brought up as, okay. as uh, uh, conceivably a, a subject that we could talk about. I I didn't have anything okay. new to add about it, okay. other than what we probably previously uh, what we previously dis discussed, uh, you know, on, on our on our regular show. Okay. Okay. So what? What? what you brought along the captain. What did we you brought? Well, we brought along the captain. We just kind of <laughs> we just kind of thought we would maybe. Uh, do a recap on on summertime. It okay. seems that it seems that fall is just about uh, just about bearing down on us mm -hmm. now. It certainly <laughs> feels like it in the morning when you get up and uh, uh, chat about uh, where we're at, where we're going to be going. Uh, we've you know, we've had a great summer. You know, the the department has had a, a wonderful summer. You know, in terms of uh, how you know, the change of seasons co uh, coexist with with our operations. You know, we're busy doing. We're busy doing budget work right now. You know, formulating our our fiscal 18 budget uh, with uh, with our committee and, and ultimately with the the entire county board. And we're off to a to a great start on that. We we had a we're looking at a slight increase um, in our in our budget of uh, just a little right around one and a half percent. And most of that is going to be based on on really intangible things out of our control and the two biggest ones being insurance and, uh, and and wages you know people get raises and so on so actually you know we have really uh, held the line really well on our budget uh, with the, you know the caveat of we're still going to put forward to the the folks in Wood County a, a very professional very well done department as as we've done in the past but we're we're going to be able to do it in a very economical way. We've uh, we've already the sheriff's department. We presented our budget to our public safety committee a week ago on on Monday, and it was uh, unanimously endorsed and passed. Okay, okay. So what's been the key for uh, to handling your budget issues? Well, you know, the biggest thing. You know, I would go back. I would go back ten years. And the, the biggest thing that we did to get control of our budget was get control of the jail. You know, we, we have had such, uh, you know, 03, 04, 05, I became sheriff in 05. We experienced uh, such a tumultuous time right then with our jail. If, if folks remember back, there was, a, there was a vote in, I think, 2002 to build a new jail. The, the county board voted to build a new jail, but then they voted not to fund a new jail. And oh yeah, that I remember they got <laughs> kind of ridiculed. <laughs> well, it was it was sort of sort of counterproductive, but uh, you know I think the message that came out of that was um, deal with the jail as you have it, you know, and take care of business with what you have. So what we did and what we looked at when when we took over was to. Uh, work on efficiencies um, you know certainly do we did some studies into uh, in, into personnel issues within the jail uh, added actually some people in the jail because we were paying so much overtime 
Uh, it was it was crazy paying the overtime a time and a half when we could add when we could add three people and pay them straight time. You know, it was literally uh, literally that easy of a choice. And we made a commitment to making our jail uh, more techno technologically uh, astute of our times. You know, with electronic monitoring and and, and those type of uh, those type of programs. You know, we. We took a we took a hard look at how we transported prisoners and, and, and other aspects of our jail and made uh, made decisions in terms of, of how we were going to accomplish those things. We locked in long term contracts with counties that had excess space to, to house our prisoners and just did a number of things to make uh, just did a number of things that made sense and were smart for us. And once we did those things, our ba our budget came into balance. And you know the, the kind of cool part about it is you know we did a lot of that stuff in 2005 through 2008 probably, and uh, we're still doing it today. We're looking at right now we're looking at another program um, that is that that deals with electronic monitoring of people. In this case, we're we're going to uh, monitor people that are released on certain types of bond. Uh, pre-sentence, pre-trial people, and uh, put them on monitors, and uh, again, you know, safeguard the people. Make sure that make sure that we can that we can monitor where these people are. If they go within a certain distance of, of a victim's house or uh, a location where they're not supposed to be, we're going to be alerted to it. That program, in and of itself, if we instituted if we instituted today. In the next 30 days, would save us fifteen thousand dollars. Wow! And uh, we are in the process right now of of kind of getting the particulars of that all in order and getting um, uh, getting the program put forward that we can uh, tell the judges what we're going to do, tell the court system what we're going to do, who we're going to release, how we're going to release them, you know, how the monitor system, kind of the kind of the, the details of, of how would involved. this work I mean uh, what kind of uh, uh, what what type of inmates are we looking at well for, let me tell you uh, uh, kind of an interesting story we have someone in jail uh, they may have been released by now but we have someone in jail right now on a two hundred dollar cash bond which essentially means that unless this person or someone for them posts two hundred dollars cash they have to remain incarcerated in the Wood County Jail. Now, you know, 200 bucks isn't a lot, you know, but this person I, I don't think legitimately has the money. This person also happens to be pregnant. So within the jail, once a person is in jail, we're on, we're on the line for all their medical expenses, you know, every single thing. So we're, in addition to uh, basic living expenses, you know, food, you know, supervision, uh, uh, making sure that the uh, prisoner is secure, which costs us about fifty dollars a day per prisoner, just for a normal prisoner. We're also paying her prenatal costs, and you know, that's rolling up to be uh, that's rolling up to be some fairly decent money. So that's that's originally, you know, initially I should say, that's the type of thing we're going to target is getting is getting some people like that. Out of the jail, where they where their prenatal care is their their own expense and not the taxpayers of Wood County, uh, for something like a for a two hundred dollar bond, um, there are a number of people that are in jail that are on um, different forms of uh, different forms of bond that will be able to very very safely release into the community. It's important to remember that these folks that are in there on these bonds. Aren't haven't even been to trial yet. They're not convicted of anything. Uh, the 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 concept that we're all so familiar with about being innocent until proven guilty certainly applies to them. And we're going to target people like the like the individual that I talked about, low cash bond, um, costing us money on the other end. You know, a person that's in jail costs us about fifty dollars a day. Mm -hmm. And if we can get these people out on electronic monitoring, the monitoring cost for us is going to be about fifteen dollars a day. So we're going to save, you know, we're going to save thirty-five bucks just right off the top per yeah. person. Uh, Sean, uh, how, um, how do you think that your 
officers will view this kind of uh, will allow you to well, we work closely with our jail. I mean, this is a good program. Number one, it saves us money. We're not going to put anybody on the street that's a, a violent offender that's on a high cash bond. As the sheriff mentioned, we're going to look at people that qualify and, and can be out in the community on bond awaiting trial. If there are any issues, like I said, we work very close with our jail. Um, if something comes up, hey, this person's in, in, a, in a city of a victim or something along down that, that line, they call us for the way and, and we'll go find them. These, <laughs> these GPS monitoring, we, it's, we've had them for quite some time and they're very accurate where we've found people and you can tell when they're in the, the grocery store what aisle they're in. I mean, they're, they're very accurate and we can find them immediately. That's amazing. The it is really cool. We were talking to a friend of ours yesterday who had a, who had a relative that was on electronic monitoring and it misbehaved a little bit and went fishing one day. Uh oh. And, <laughs> and you know, I, I think in, in his mind, I think he thought, okay, I'm on I'm on this piece of property. He probably thought that the monitor would say that he was at ten ten Apple Street or whatever the right. address was where they were at. But no, the, the monitor actually showed that he was on a lake. <laughs> and so we Oops. that that was um, that was a case where we had, had Pulled his electronic monitoring uh, um, status for a while and brought him brought him in and kind of did some uh, did some counseling with him regarding that. So this proposal for this an expansion of monitoring it's um, when would it come before the county board or are it you, won't it won't you guys can I just, will just I'll I'll I'm just I'm going to institute it. You're going to institute it. Yes. Okay. So this will save the uh, county a lot of money. With that money that you save, what uses could you put that money toward? Well, I think the first thing is make sure that we make sure that our overall budget stays in line. One of the things that uh, one of the things that we've learned and, and is is that we need to continue um, a lot of the programs that we already have in place. And one thing that uh, immediately comes to mind for me is the, is the program that we have with the with the squad cars right now. Um, our chief deputy and, and I have come up with a with a program that we uh, we need to replace on a regular basis a certain number of cars. Now, in this particular year, we have uh, we budgeted for for six cars in uh, to be replaced in our fleet, and you know taking. Um, I guess the best way to look at it is, you know, if we're saving fifteen thousand bucks a month on on prisoners' expense, there's always something else that you know we need to update. Whether it's equipment for the deputies, or bulletproof vests, or squad cars, or uh, IT computer equipment, now is is a, a, a really huge deal for us. And uh, you know, we we didn't get to be the most technological sheriff's department in in the county by you know having cheap equipment and so we we have really good equipment with it to the deputies and so on which i'll cost money so it's always a matter of where we can save it's always going to be reinvested back into the service side of uh, of, of the department what type uh, of vehicles are you going uh, for uh, as it more of the suv type of all, yeah. all terrain yeah we've for several year now, years now we've uh, had suvs they're chevy towels okay and Right now, our, our complete patrol fleet is all Tahoes. Well, we have two Crown Vicks as reserve deputy vehicles. That's it. The rest of everything in our fleet are uh, Chevy Tahoes. And each deputy has their own squad assigned to them. Um, they're lasting longer because we're not on the road as much. And we're finding out that ought to be a, a savings in the long run. Uh, we're able to keep these vehicles quite a bit longer than turn them over like every year or two as you see other agencies that run their squads 24 hours a day okay right? uh, and then we're seeing in those particular situations maintenance costs really catch up with you fast and then you got miles on a squad that within a year or two are up to 100 uh, 150,000. and then again the maintenance costs start to really catch up with you here we can stretch them out for up to four to five years that we're we're hanging out in these vehicles and and we're not getting killed by the the maintenance costs and they're also more a, a better fit for our climate and our uh, this the rural nature of Wood right. County. You got two cities on either end and a lot of country in between, and we all know what kind of winters we can have. 
Yeah. Exactly. Chevy Tahoe is really the perfect vehicle uh, for us. One of the things I remember from back when I got back in 1982, the, the person who was in charge of our squad car that time was a really good, and remains a really good friend of mine named Gary Boomsock. And one of the one of his goals always was to um, see that the department got to this point where every man had a car because he was a huge proponent on the fact that they were going to be better taken care of. People would invest in their own cars. They wouldn't, uh, you know, when something needed to be done with them, they would get done. That didn't happen until after uh, until after 2005. Uh, we, in some cases, had three people sharing a car when uh, when I became sheriff, and those cars were just getting pounded. You know, we would we were like replacing brakes every month on, on, on some of those, and it was it was just getting kind of crazy. Well, now you know we've gotten to the point where we're car for man. Uh, the maintenance costs like fall through the floor. It ends up being a cheaper overall process for us. Going back to the Tahoes, um, bigger car. Right. You know, it's a, a more storage space. What a lot of people don't think of is that if we have a, uh, if, if a deputy goes on a call, they might have a call in Babcock, let's say. Right. And if there is a piece of equipment that he would need, if he doesn't have that in his car, He's looking at probably an uh, hour to an hour 15 driving back to Rapids and going back to Babcock. So we need to get the equipment that the people, that the deputies need in their cars. And with the, with the Tahoes, we've experienced, you know, we've experienced that we can do that. You know, we can get the, we can get the shovels in the car. We can get the, uh, the speed strips that we need in the car. We can get all that equipment in the car so we're not running back and forth to the courthouse all the time, which is a huge advantage that municipal city police departments have. It's relatively easy for them to run into the sure. run into the department and grab what they need and go back out to, to the scene. Not so for us. You know, we need to. Uh, I always I always talk about those cars, uh, the the deputies' cars actually being their office. You know, it's a it's a literally a rolling office. They can they can accomplish whatever they need to do in an emergency in that car in terms of equipment, in terms of communication, in terms of documenting uh, documenting crime scenes. It's really, really important that we have that equipment with them at all times, where, like I said, sometimes for, uh, for more municipal applications, it's, it's, it's fairly easy to go half a mile and grab what you need and come back out to the scene. You, you both mentioned um, a good summer. What do you attribute that to? What, or, or what was the biggest problem you dealt with during this past summer? Season? You know, nothing really jumps out at us specifically. Uh, we've had, you know, various traffic complaints, speeding, you know, issues uh, throughout the county. But, you know, overall, um, you know, nothing really, uh, you know, sticks out. We've had a few fatalities, unfortunately, throughout the summer. A couple of motorcycles, um, you know, that, that type of stuff. But. Other than that, the larger events that we had over the summer went, went real well. You know, the water ski uh, uh, tournament went, went very well. We had great weather, um, very low calls to service. Um, you know, the Corvette uh, cruise, again, we not many issues out with that. And, and we had to deal with that J-turn over on 54, and, and that was kind of a concern, but uh, we had our, our Wood County Rescue out helping out with traffic control there. And didn't really receive uh, many many issues out of that. Um, we're gonna have a follow up uh, meeting with that just for for next year. But overall, you know, boat patrol, uh, no major issues are out there. You know, working uh, not going with each and a little bit of the Wisconsin River, and got good feedback there. So um, overall, besides you know the traffic fatalities that were up a little bit in Wood County, um, we what do you attribute that summer. to? Well, you know, at least the motorcycle fatalities. One was um, uh, they struck a deer. And, and that's just, always a bad thing yeah, with a motorcycle. Right. The other one was uh, somebody failed to negotiate a turn. And the person that, that um, you know, passed away from that uh, wasn't from the area. And it was a curve uh, on one of our local highways. And, you know, I contribute that as, as experience. Um, you know, it's still under investigation, but that's what it's appearing to be right now. And all the couple of alcohol related uh, crashes as well. Unfortunately, uh, somebody chose to drive and, and cause a crash, and, um, and somebody's not here because of it. Um, but other than that, um, the summer, uh, in my opinion, was quite successful. And um, 
you know, like I said, those major events we worked through and, and didn't have any issues. And we got one more big summer event, <laughs> Labor Day. Yeah. And uh, so that usually involves a big influx of people from out of town to our area who have, uh, say, cabins on... Uh, cabins and their parks will be full. Parks you know, are going to be um, full, and for sure. Yeah, our reserve deputies will, will still continue to be working through uh, that weekend, um, so we'll have extra people working uh, to help out, and especially keep an eye on the parks. I know the parks will, will be uh, full. Again, the reserve deputy program went very well. Um, again, got really good feedback from the powers that be. Um, in all of our parks, and uh, again, really nice summer. Yeah, and I guess that's uh, community law enforcement, you know, getting the reserve deputies out there and meeting the campers mm -hmm. and interacting with but the visitors. That brings up a point. One of our reserve deputies, during the water ski show, um, one team was practicing a dance, and I don't think he knew that he was being recorded. <laughs> they uh, they kind of coaxed him over, hey, you want to do this warm-up dance with us? And, um, yeah, Reserve Deputy uh, Ben Gruber <laughs> uh, decided to, to play along and, um, and did a little dancing with uh, that particular ski team, and uh, that went viral. <laughs> <laughs> that was huge. We talked about that, I think, yeah, in the last show. Um, it, it, it's, I, I don't even know how many hits it had. It was like over a yeah. thousand or something. Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> crazy lot which which is the exact thing that we've been talking about and I think that's just you know I, I think that that was just the absolute perfect thing for him to do was to was to get involved in that way because I you know so often like we we've, we've talked about I think there's a uh, a misconception by people that sometimes the, the the people wearing uniforms and and working for the sheriff's department are robots yeah. And and they're not, you know. There's so many, there's so many neat guys that the guys and women that are are deputies and, and their personalities are are cool, you know. Just just getting out there and and, and meeting them, um, I think goes a long way towards avoiding and, and certainly dealing with some of the um, more tenuous things that we've seen nationally in terms of the police. And mm -hmm. and hopefully it's. It's, uh, it's it's an investment that will always pay dividends for us, and I think it's been something that's been a very positive thing for the department. You know, every time that a deputy I think gets out of the car, or, or a reserve deputy gets out of the car and plays catch with a kid, or plays basketball with them, or uh, goes and visits with a family, um, setting up camp, or or helps somebody pitch a tent. You know, it's immeasurable the, the value that that brings to, to our community and to, and to the relationship that we have with the public. Well, let's hope uh, it, uh, we have a uh, quiet end to uh, the summer. And I thank you guys for filling in for Lance. You bet. He owes our you pleasure. one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lance has been great to the Sheriff's Department. Yep. I, uh, this is the least we can do for him. No, okay. Well, you guys take care. Have a, a good weekend. And let's hope for a nice, quiet, peaceful Labor Day holiday. Sounds good to me. Always good to see you, buddy. Okay, yeah. take care. Yeah. Okay, what County you share of Thomas Record Captain Sean Becker here on the Morning Magazine uh, on AM 1320 and WFHR.com, uh, as well as on Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. We thank Don Lux, uh, Lux for being here.